My name is Ben Friedman. I'm from Ankeny, Iowa. I'm a recent college graduate and an aspiring storyteller and filmmaker. Hi, I'm Michael Rundy. I'm from Dubuque, Iowa. I'm a recent graduate of Loris College and I'm an aspiring videographer and storyteller. It was here and then it was gone just like that. One Stolen Moment is a short documentary focusing on four athletes at Loris College who in the spring of 2020 had their national championship runs canceled due to COVID-19. We got really lucky. I mean, to be honest, the athletes that we interviewed, like we said, were all, all four of them very accomplished, but also great <laughs> orators for describing their experience. We're a Division Three school, and you hear yeah. Division Three, you instantly think like, okay, maybe a lower tier of sports competition, but you're like, no, no, no. Then you hear like Olympics, and you hear All-American, and you hear Sports Center, and you're like, oh, okay, these athletes are the real deal, and honestly would be able to compete at the Division One level. Yeah, and when the entire basis is that, these four teams were potentially going to make a run at a national championship. You need to show that like, oh, they actually could win this national championship. No one will stop her. Gabby Nolan, unstoppable. Have yourself a championship, Gabby Nolan. It felt like it had the heart in it, but we wanted to basically make it feel like these athletes are rock stars and as cool as they like act. This can't be happening. And it was interesting to be kind of in the middle of, of somewhat of a grieving process for these athletes. Um, and for all four of them to open up as much as they did and be so vulnerable was uh, pretty spectacular. Gave us some awesome material that we were able to share. Yeah, and it's like, it's always a weird thing too when you are asking someone about one of the worst things that's ever happened to them, like a couple weeks after it happened. Like, you know, it, that's like, so if they would have, not wanted to be a part of it at all, like we kind of would have understood. I walked away, I think, from the whole entire process having a deeper understanding of resiliency. I don't think I've had something as high stakes in my life as something that maybe they went through. And to see that they were putting themselves already in a position where they knew what they were gonna do going forward. And that this one particular weekend didn't define their whole entire career was pretty eye-opening for me. The documentary as a whole was dedicated to everyone who went through something similar, whether maybe it's not a sporting event, but lost something because of COVID, uh, lost an opportunity. That, I think that can hit home beyond or the sport context of the documentary. The idea is you want not just the Loris community to understand and like care about the doc, but you want other people outside of that to sort of get what these people are going through and sort of get the message behind all of it. And when it sort of hits home with people outside of that realm, it's, it's a nice, it was a nice feeling. It was here and then it was gone just like that. There's nothing we could have done. You know, I don't really think there's anything in your life that'll prepare you for that moment. There's still something I'm waiting for. To have it all come to a close in such an abrupt way, it's unimaginable. We started ranked number one in the country. It was our year. We won conference this past year and we won regionals and beat Warburg, knocking off a 28-year streak. That was pretty awesome. Out in Iowa at Loris College, Guy Patron. He's the first Division III wrestler we have talked about on the show. I know this is true. Guy's a badass. My name is Guy Patron, Jr., and I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. I wrestle here at Loris College. I think we were pretty confident and excited about what good coming back and what we thought we could do. We had four on all conference. Marissa, Mac, first team, me and Courtney, second team. We had knocked off three ranked teams, first time in history for our programs making the Sweet 16. We had the best year in Morris College history. Number 21. 
I'm Carrie Fitzpatrick. I'm a senior here at Loris and I play women's basketball. You've been doing it all season long, just like follow what Jones has told you. Trust that process, this is real. We're all pretty excited on what we can do. Jamari Scott, for Lewis. I'm Shamari, I'm a senior, I run track. We were doing probably the best we've ever done as a girls team. We were really kind of honing everything together. The whole season was probably one of the best I've ever had. No one will stop her! Gabby Nolan, unstoppable! I'm Gabby Nolan. I have been running all four years at Loris. Have yourself a championship, Gabby Nolan. From day one, when he got up here, you could just, people knew. When I was a coach at Holy Cross in New Orleans, guy would come over and work out with me one-on-one. -on -one. When I got this job, I put him at the top of the list just because he gave me such headaches as a coach when I was down there. And I wanted him on my team. He just kind of changed the culture, literally, like overnight. Plus, he's just an awesome dude. He's an RA, he's in the National Guard. He washes our laundry every day. He's just a guy that people want to be around. Cares a real interesting story. Her ability to impact other people on her recruiting visit, I remember plain as day. She could do a thousand different things and some of that changed from game to game. She always guarded their best player because she was so good defensively. She's super invested, cares about team only all the time and I think having that rub off into younger players is a really good thing to see. Shamari has been one of those kids that has been a, a good team glue guy the big time of the year, when it was conference, when it was nationals. He wanted to do everything that he could for his teammates to be successful. I love that kid, and he's worked really hard um, to get better, to get where he's at. And then Gabby, you know, the, the GOAT term is out there, right? She was knocking on the doorstep of hitting the U.S. trials qualifying times for the 2020 Olympics. When you talk about records and regional awards and national recognition and national championships, um, I, I just can't find anyone in our history that has had that kind of success. Let's preview a historic weekend coming up for Dewhawk Athletics. We have four teams competing on the national stage. In We've never had it where it's all been in one particular weekend like that. Best case scenario, wrestling wins a national championship, the women's basketball goes to the final four, and both track teams trophy. I think it all began on a Wednesday when uh, the NCAA announced that the Division I basketball tournament was going to be called off, and I think it sent the world into a spin. TV screens everywhere, and it was just sports are canceled, NCAA. It just made the decision to cancel the men's and women's. Basketball tournament was about to begin, is that it will not be happening. And we thought, okay, what is this going to mean? For us, nothing about Division Three had come to be. Going into the national championship, some teams are already dropping out. They weren't traveling, their schools put a ban on it. We thought, okay, we'll at least get through the weekend. All day, we had been getting emails like, banquets canceled, um, your parents can't come, your parents can come, and then your parents can't come, then no one can come again. We're in the hotel room getting ready for, um, just to go out to dinner. We just hear knocks on the door going down, and it's Jones. TJ called us all into uh, the hotel room and we walk in and it was definitely like a, you can tell a change of mood in the room. I practiced at four, got into stretching and then our first drill and within five minutes of our first drill. The next thing you know, we get an email and it says division three, all remaining divisions are canceled. It just kind of felt like time stopped. This can't be happening. 
We all kind of sat there in disbelief for a little while. Everyone just really didn't know how to react in that moment. This is a dream, bad dream. Got to wake up from it. Started tearing up and like crying, and then made like Gabby and Terry uh, tear up. And I look over at them and I'm just like, I put my head down. As I was walking down the hall, I heard student athletes in tears, and that really hurt me. I started to tear up actually. Their dreams just got shattered. I rise and fall with all of our students because I get to see them at their very best and I get to see them in their not so very best. And in each, in each way, I care about them. And so it's hard, I take it home with me. That night, that when I went home and actually had a moment to think about it, I cried. I'm gonna cry right now. After four years of wanting to be a national champion, you know, now I just, like, I don't get that last opportunity. You know, I kind of tell myself every day, like, yeah, I mean, it's over. I looked at Patrick Michael, who had been training to try and go to the Olympics. I thought of Shamari and how he worked so hard to get back into the sport when he had to take a year off. And then it really didn't hit me until my coach started crying and I was like, I'm done. You know, you can kind of prepare for end of the year speeches. I don't know if I'm great at them, but you still have a semblance of like how this goes. There's nothing about how that goes. It was heartbreaking, especially for us three seniors. I mean, that's never really how you envision your senior year is going to end. I think it's really hard to explain because you're there and you should be running, but you're just not. I think that was the hardest part, in all honesty. You know, if we would have found out on Tuesday that um, it was canceled before we ever made the trip, I think it would have made the decision by the NCAA a lot easier. Where I'm probably heartbroken the most is like how far could we have gone. There was a lot of unknowns with our season and I think we were playing our best basketball and that we were confident. I think it was really going to put something there for um, history for them and for the institution and then and then future for everyone else. It would have been our best winter, spring or fall season in the history of, of the college. And I make no apologies, you know, we had national championships hanging out there and uh, those were taken in my humble opinion. We all thought that there was a great shot that we were going to have four national champions coming back on Sunday. As a team, we decided it'd be best if we still went out, got dressed up, and made light of the situation. They needed to mourn, they needed time, honestly. We had a good group of seniors, so told them to go mourn, and then we're going we're gonna to celebrate this season as a family. We went out to eat, had a nice steak, and tried to make the most of it, you know. We wanted to do stuff together that day, the rest of the day, into the night, uh, just so we were together and hanging out and at least kind of probably sponging the feeling of what that actually felt like. Before anything really had a chance to set in back on campus, everyone was gone. And so there really wasn't an opportunity to, to kind of put your minds at ease, to get back in the regular swing of things. But it's a bigger picture. Like, look at look at this campus. It's, there's nobody here, right? And there's nobody anywhere in any campus in the country and to understand that, like what can you do about it? You can't, right, you can't do anything. At the time people were still wondering, oh, is this, is this really the right decision? Why can't we play? And I think now it's like, yeah, that it was the right decision. The NCAA taking that season from us, like obviously ending it right where it was, was a like, good call for our health. But at the same time, it's like, it's like very heartbreaking. It's like you it, we were like so close. It was just literally just snatched right from us. My last two years was basically, you know, taken from me, you know, one due to injury, another due to like uh, epidemic that we can't really control. I feel like it was the right move, canceling the tournament. I just wish that they could have just gone through with it, that, you know, just one weekend. That's the thing, like for me, it's easy because I'll have 20 more of these, you know. Um, I, I, I'm still gonna feel for our, probably our seniors the most. There's some days where I'm like, all right, I'm done, like I'm moving on, I'm an adult now. And then there's other days where I'm like, I wanna go back. I've just spent my whole life running. It's weird, it's different. Um, I've just grown up my whole life playing sports and I've always been involved in something and feel badly for my teammates. And just knowing that their season got cut short and for the ones who maybe don't get a fifth year, you know, that's pretty hard. At the end of the day, we had a great season and we are able to end with the winningest team in Loris College history. You know, just being undefeated on the year, that's definitely something to take away and to be proud of. 
reflecting back on our day-to-day -day practice, the relationships that I've built, those are what the things that I miss the most, I think. Yeah, you're going to remember the Sweet 16, you're going to remember the Elite Eight, all that stuff, but I think what's most important is just the friendships, the relationships you've built, all the memories we've made. When I look back, I'll always remember Coach Jay being by my side and supporting me, um, always telling me that he believed in me. After that initial hurt, it was good to see all the programs kind of rallying around the sports that were affected. There's been the hashtag Lores Together going around campus, reminding each other we're in this together and we're all going to come out better and stronger. Hey guys and gals, I'm Greg Gumbel, class of 1967 at Loris College. I heard that... Hey Dewhawks, this is head men's volleyball coach Jeremy Farnberg. I just wanted to send you a quick pick-me-up message. There may be a lot of unknowns out there. Good thing is we can do this together. Hey, we're going to rock this go and go Dewhawks. Two words which I will leave with you. Go do Hawks. I think that um, the community showed what, what it means to be a do Hawk and, and put their heart out for people for sure. They put out a blanket waiver that says you can come back for another year for your spring sport athlete. It's a tough spot to be in for winter sports because you know you don't get that back. The fact that we get an elder back at least that gives like you know a lot of us a chance to have some sort of closure but at the same time um, there's a possibility of like not having everyone back because some seniors have to get on with their life. There are some people who are going back for their fifth year of eligibility. I'm not really too keen on taking that. I'm engaged currently. I've got a job waiting for me in criminal justice. I'm ready to be an adult. For so long I've been known as Gabby Noland, the runner, you know, it's just kind of been my staple and what people know me by. So it's definitely going to be a change just being Gabby Noland, just the regular cool, cool kid, you know. I'm at um, City High, my high school, um, on the track. I just finished a workout not too long ago. We still got unfinished business. That's kind of like the message that was left with us. The next step from here for me personally would be go to the last chance qualifying tournament for the Olympic trials to make a world team and hopefully eventually the Olympics. It was my first recruiting class overall. You know, there was even some guys that weren't starters that were just huge for our culture. And they set the foundation, like a championship foundation. This class, they left a legacy that is just maybe unmatched. As a freshman, I didn't think that we'd get to this point ever. Like, All-American was still, like, crazy to me. Now it's just natural for us to take, like, 10 girls to the national championships. It's natural for us to take, like, 15 guys to the national championships. People know Loris and they look for them. We've accomplished so much as a campus and as student athletes that this doesn't really take any of that away. Yes, the physical game was taken away and that opportunity, but we still look back and there's so much to celebrate. And the biggest takeaway I'll take away from this is to never give up. To see everything come full circle has been awesome and I always think back to that time where I didn't touch a basketball for four months and I was going to give it up. Sometimes it's going to be way out of your control and it's just based off how you respond to it. When you're living in the moment, uh, you feel like you have forever. Well, you just have to like cherish it as long as you have it. My biggest takeaway is to always appreciate what you have and to always value it, cherish it, and find the positives in what you've already done. One thing I've learned in college, you know, whether or not you play a sport, you know, you just you kind of got to enjoy your life um, and not put too much pressure, too much stress on yourself about, you know, the little things. We've got incredible athletics, um, incredible people, and COVID-19 is not going to stop us. As it relates to the seniors, um, I think it's important to know that they're loved.